My work is a visual diary. It's a very edited visual journal. It takes me about nine months to hook a rug. Because it takes so long to hook a rug, I must have an image that I'm very excited about. Mostly I work from photos that I've taken. Sometimes I work from a sketch, and sometimes I start by making paper cutouts. Many of my rugs are about memories, about my family, and about the places they've called home. I come from a small town in Northern Ontario, and I have a rug about that called Working on the Railroad. Unlike most of my rugs, it is inspired by a photo that my father took in 1936 when he had his first job working on the extra gang for the CNR. My rug called Patrick and Logan at Baltham Lake is about my son and his dog. They were playing a version of soccer that I thought was uniquely Canadian because it involved a canoe. I like how the dog is looking at Patrick with such admiration. My grandmother's diary is about Machias Seal Island, where my grandmother spent her teenage years on a small island where her father kept the lighthouse. She met her future husband, my grandfather, when he landed on Machias Seal Island to deliver a load of coal. My rug, Chris and Blackie, is about my mother and how she felt after my sister and I had left home. It was just my father and her at home, and as she said, Fred let the TV do the talking for him. I hooked this rug of Honest Ed's because I used to have so much fun shopping there. It was retail therapy before the phrase was coined. And I feel bad that it's gone now and being replaced by condos. This is one of my newest rugs, the house that Sam built. It's a house on Grand Manan Island built by my ancestor, Sam Harvey. You can see the marks of the axe on the hand-hewn beams in the attic. It's the rug that has been accepted for Fiberworks 2020. I dyed the wool for the shingles by pleating the wool and sewing down the pleats. I then dipped it in a very little bit of silver gray dye. I unpleated it, cut it, and taped it down in the order it was cut and hooked it. I dyed the wool for the lawn using a different technique. I painted the dye directly onto the wool. I liked the names of the dyes I used, apricot, old gold, and bronze green. This image shows the back of my rug. The raw edge of the linen is cut and turned to the back of the rug. It's then whipped with matching woolen yarn and twill tape is sewn over the raw edge. This is my studio, also known as my living room. I have everything I need, a comfy couch, a cup of tea, a cat, and an ot light. I also have a good south facing window. This is my stash. I spent the first week of the pandemic joyfully sorting my wool by color for my next project. Some of it is the color of bricks, terracotta, and surprisingly, some of it is the color of bricks and they are purple bricks. Some is the color of the sky, some the color of snow, and some is the color of a neon palm tree. The next drug that I plan to hook is the Elmo Combo, a live music venue that was supposed to have had a grand reopening mid-April, but that was delayed because of the pandemic. I used to go to the Elmo Combo circa 1975, Toronto is changing too fast for me. I'm glad the Elma Combo and the Neon Palms are still hanging in there.